Hello everyone. Uh, well, it's Saturday night. It's Sunday tomorrow, um, New Zealand time anyway. And uh, it feels strange to not be going to physical church tomorrow again. Um, some parts of the country, some people, are, you know, able to meet it in small groups. Uh, in Auckland, we can't have church at the moment. So, but anyway, think of this as a, um, a Sunday message, I guess, on a Saturday night. Um, and I just want to talk a bit about uh, spiritual maturity. Um, the desire of, of God, of his heart towards his people, is for his people to grow and to, and to grow up into uh, maturity. And uh, there's two main places that, that I know of in the New Testament where um, God talks in his word about uh, maturity and um, and gives us sort of a descriptor of um, what maturity is or isn't, uh, spiritually speaking. So one is in 1 Corinthians 3 and the other is uh, Hebrews chapters 5 and 6, the end of chapter 5 and early part of chapter 6. So we'll read through those and have a little talk about them. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 um, verses 1 to 3. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Carnal means fleshly, living a fleshly kind of life rather than a spiritual life. Verse 2, I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able for you are still carnal for there where there are envy strife and divisions among you are you not carnal and behaving like mere men or the literal and the margin says walking walking according to man or man's ways fleshly ways uh, so we know that you know babies just drink milk initially and then as they grow then they go on to um, solid food one of the one of the major issues in the church generally speaking in the body of christ is that we have many 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 people who have been christians for some time now um, but still just feed on milk and they're still like uh, babies spiritual babies and some of them being christians even for years and some in some cases even decades and god doesn't want it like that he wants people to to grow up um you know if you were god would you want to be constantly just dealing with a nursery full of babies uh, just uh you know um uh, an organization an institute whatever you want to call it a body uh, a church full of 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 people who are just overgrown babies they're like the size of adults but they're still drinking milk out of bottles like babies um nobody wants to do you know when our children grow up we don't want them when they become adults to still be like great big um, babies one of the things we always hope for and work for as we bring up children is to help them to become responsible adults and make adult uh, decisions and get through life as an adult and not be big babies so you can understand maybe something of you know maybe we can understand something of god's um, point of view and so we don't want to still be big babies just drinking milk um, and of course, when he talks about milk and solid food or milk and meat, um, he's talking about the spiritual diet of what we listen to, what we ingest spiritually, you know, what uh, what we're imbibing from our study of God's word and what we're listening to in terms of the preaching and teaching. Um, 
of God's word. And so he says, uh, the, he gives three signs here uh, of people still being babies, um, besides the fact of their diet, they still just got a diet of a very milky sort of preaching and teaching. So very milky teaching that that doesn't become, you know, that's that doesn't really take them further into into greater growth as a as a person um, in Christ. So they just decided to just stick with milky teaching. But also, uh, so there's the diet as one one sign of a of of, a, of somebody who's not maturing as a Christian is their spiritual diet. Uh, three more signs here he says is is envy or jealousy, uh, strife, and divisions. So where people are envious of other people, jealous of other people, that's a sign of spiritual immaturity. Uh, strife, you know, people. Uh, fighting and being contentious with other people you know not everyone's gonna love us and and you know when you're a speaker of truth not everyone's gonna be your friend but generally speaking we we don't we want to live in peace and as much as is possible for us um, and you know it takes a lot of energy to constantly live at war with other people and you definitely don't want to be someone who's at war with everyone some people are at war with everyone they're at war with the whole world and and we don't want to be um, like that uh, that's just too hard <laughs> that's too tiring um, so strive you know contentions being contentious with other people argumentative uh, and divisions he says so so uh, divisions happening between um, Christians and believers becoming divided over doctrinal things that probably we don't need to be divided over and in their case in verse 4 he says one says I'm of Paul and another says I'm of Apollo so they were saying that oh, we follow different streams of teaching so some of them were saying I follow Paul's stream of teaching some of them were saying I follow Apollos's uh, stream of teaching remember he was a very eloquent one Paul said he wasn't so eloquent in his preaching uh, and then he, later on he mentions Peter as as well and so some people were saying oh, I'm I'm in Peter's stream you know and so you know some people today say oh, I'm I'm a charismatic I'm a Pentecostal you know or some people say no I don't believe in speaking in tongues I'm not charismatic and we have these different sorts of um, uh, streams and and they can actually become divisions at times and uh, and Paul says it's a sign of our immaturity now the other place of course as I said is Hebrews um, chapters 5 and end of chapter 5 and beginning of verse 6 so uh, Hebrews 5 from verse 12 for though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone else to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God the sayings of God the margin says and you have come to need milk and not solid food so here he goes again talking about uh, milk for everyone verse 13 who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for he is a babe or a baby so here again we see the spiritual diet is 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 symptomatic of whether we're a baby or mature as a believer um, and he's saying that um, that when he's speaking to these Hebrew Christians he's saying you know you guys have come to need milk again you're not growing and maturing you're not able to ingest more solid um, teaching you're still on this milky teaching this baby teaching and you know there's a lot of baby teaching around you know there's stuff that you can tune into and listen to that's very very um, baby like um, teaching and then he says in verse 14 but solid food belongs to those who are of full age or mature that is who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so here's another uh, sign of babyhood or maturity is do we have our senses 
um, exercised enough through reason of use or of practice um, to discern good and evil. Now, we were just talking about teaching, milky teaching and solid food teaching. So, you know, one of the things is, you know, can we even discern what is milky teaching and what's solid food teaching? And then beyond that, he talks about good and evil as well. So can we discern when uh, somebody who approaches us, you, you know, is a shepherd or a wolf? Um, you know, Paul said that it's we shouldn't be surprised if the devil... Um, and his agents transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. So it's very clear from what Paul says that uh, some people in the pulpits who preach are actually agents of the enemy and not of Jesus. They're not really working for Jesus. So, you know, we really need to have discernment. Some people, uh, maybe, you know, they're for Jesus, they're working for Jesus, but it's just very milky. Um, so this is another sign is, you know, can we discern good and evil? I was shocked, you know, in 2019, there was a fairly well-known Canadian, um, charismatic Pentecostal minister who'd been around for quite some time. There was a revival based around him. Um, I forget what year it was maybe 2008. Um, and, you know, for years, this guy had been playing up. Uh, when I say playing up, he'd just been into sin, just all sorts of sin. And the reports about him just came, uh, you know, uh, over the years, there was just more and more reports about it. And it became very obvious that the guy, you know, was in sin and wasn't a good, you know, wasn't a good person to be um, in the pulpit, you know, wasn't living righteously. I was amazed, you know, even when he was pretty much just fully investigated and exposed there was still people who wanted to follow him and defend his ministry and, and and so on now i'm not talking about attack the person come down on them and try and you know <laughs> try and just crush them and destroy them but what i am saying is you know there's some people that we need to discern and say hey that's not a good ministry to actually um, pay attention to so spiritual maturity involves um, discerning um, these things Ver chapter 6 let's move into the next verse therefore leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ let us so he's saying here's the elementary things this is kindergarten and prime uh, you know primary school early primary school uh, entry level stuff he says let us let us go on to uh, perfection or maturity not laying again the foundation of repentance so repentance is a basic doctrine that we should have sort of that many believers nowadays even don't repentance is not even in their comprehension because many preachers don't even talk about repentance anymore but here it is as a basic um foundational doctrine of the church repentance from dead works and a faith towards god faith is a really important foundational doctrine doctrine of baptism so understanding baptism in water baptism in the holy spirit um, jesus talks about being baptized with fire as well so having a biblical understanding of 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 fire is important as well even um, of laying on of hands another basic doctrine lay on of hands to impart uh, spiritual gifts to pray for healing to for impartation of anointings uh, of resurrection from the dead we don't even talk about that a whole lot in the church and of eternal judgment and of course that's a subject that some people don't want to talk about at all is judgment uh, and i think that we're sometime soon uh, in these talks we're going to talk about it um, soon um, because it's becoming a subject of the times and some people still don't want to talk about it but we're going to have to start as believers we're going to have to start talking about it we can't really keep avoiding that forever and verse 3 says and this we will do uh, if God permits so he says here's some foundational doctrines we should have these sorted and then we should be able to move on to even more meaty uh, teaching and I've found sometimes when you preach something that's a little bit the revelations may be a bit uh, deeper or something like that um, that some people um, don't even understand what you're saying 
the other thing, because they're still in a very baby-like approach to Christianity, the other thing I've found is that some people present some teaching as, or revelation as supposedly being very deep and super spiritual. And they will say, you know, an angel appeared to me and told me these things, or I had this dream and there was this and this and this. And I'm not against dreams. God will give us dreams, no doubt. But some people have a very, very uh, a certain way of presenting things where uh, the presentation is made out that this is very high level revelation. But then when you really listen to what they're saying and dissect it, um, there's not a whole lot of revelation in it. Uh, so we need to, you know, let's start growing up and discerning. And I, like I say, I'm not talking about... Uh, you know, um, a, a sort of a negative attitude towards preaching or preachers or things like I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about growing up and discerning and 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 knowing and knowing what's good teaching and and what's not good teaching. And of course, the other thing that other things that Paul talked about in First Corinthians three that you know that we're not constantly being offended by other people we're not constantly fighting with other people we're not jealous with other of other people that we're not into all these sort of childlike um uh, sort of behaviors that uh, so that we need to move on from from those things as well and and learn to to love our, our brethren so that's my little talk to you um for this time as i said i think at some point we're going to start talking um about judgment because the judgments of god are in the earth um at this time isaiah 26 uh, 9 and some people don't like to talk about that subject because it's not a popular subject it's not the motivational ted talk um kind of preaching uh but uh you know you guys those who know me know that that's i i i'm i'm not concerned with trying uh to do that i think there's a time and a place for that but um but sometimes we have to kind of sober up and face the times we're in in a in a sober way and stop um trying to kind of live in denial of, of them and, and face it and then say, hey, you know, what what do we do here and what's our posture towards uh, the Lord in these times? But anyway, spiritual maturity. Let's not be babies who are just like we're in big adult bodies, but we're still, you know, sucking on baby bottles full of milk um, and, and being offended with people and, and listening to all sorts of uh, teaching that's not really um, uh, solid or good um, but let's on to move on to maturity and let's move on to uh, solid food and a, and a meaty spiritual diet shall we um, the Lord bless you and uh, and thank you Lord we thank the Lord so much that he is faithful to his promises and his word and that he's the lord that never changes and we love him so much in jesus name amen